हाई एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई YouTube चैनल माई नेम लवली कुमारी एंड लास्ट वीडियो में मैंने पूछा था जो आप लोगों से, से कि आप लोगों को आंसर्स लॉन्ग वीडियोज में चाहिए या फिर शॉर्ट वीडियोज में सो आई रिसीव द कमेंट्स दैट यू वॉन्ट द आंसर इन द लॉन्ग वीडियोज एंड आई रिसीव सो मेनी कमेंट्स फॉर द आंसर वीडियो दैट्स वाई आई थाउट टू मेक सच वीडियोज सो टूडे आई कल कम्प्लीट द इन्फोसिस रिव्यू क्वेश्चन पार्ट वन आंसर्स and uh, please like share and subscribe my youtube channel it motivates me to make, uh, make such videos so without wasting time let's start it so in the first question like uh, the question was what are the automation tools in salesforce so there are four uh, types of automation tools in salesforce first one is a workflow then we have process builder and then we have flows and then we have apex triggers so moving to the next question next question is uh, what is the difference between trigger.new and trigger.old so trigger.new and trigger.olds are the context variable in apex triggers and uh, trigger.new holds our objects records data which is currently set by the users and the uh, trigger.new only returns the new version of the as object and uh, we have to uh, we have to while uh, Uh, using the trigger dot new, we have to keep some things in our mind that uh, trigger dot new is only available in insert, update, and undelete triggers, and uh, the records can be only modified in the before triggers. We can triggers like uh, we cannot modify it in the after trigger. We can only modify it in the before trigger. and uh, now comes to the trigger dot old so trigger dot old contains the history of the object records and it returns the old version of the as object and uh, as object lists only available in the update and delete trigger so moving to the next question next question was what are the restrictions or limitations in the future methods and how to overcome with it so following are the restrictions in future methods that uh, in, in, uh, in the future methods we uh, it's recommended that uh, do not process a large number of records in the future methods and it supports only primitive data types and a parameter must uh, we should always define parameter as a primitive data types or uh, we can also pass the uh, wrapper in the parameter as well and uh, uh, the tracing of future method is not straight forward because on uh, the future methods returns only void type that uh, void type that's why it's very difficult to uh, track the future methods and uh, we can uh, not call the future methods from the another future methods and we also not call the future method from the batch apex as well and uh, the last one is future methods can return only void type Uh, and uh, now see the uh, like how to overcome it so to overcome these restrictions we should consider the following strategies so uh, instead of using the future methods for the last number of date record we can use the batch apex here so we can uh, use batch apex for the process of last number of records and then uh, as we cannot uh, as we cannot pass the primitive data types and uh, if the requirement is like we should uh, pass the as object so instead of passing the as object we can pass the as object id or collection of ids and uh, use id to perform a query for the most up to date uh, records and uh, the next is uh, we can not directly call one future method to another future method but uh, like uh, if the requirement comes that uh, we uh, we should use a future method so it's not recommended to use but the uh, there is one work around that we call a web service and that has a future invocation and we call uh, from the, uh, we call on the future method from that web service so that means uh, we will write one uh, future methods and that future methods call one web service and that web service call for future methods so in that way we can call uh, the future methods and the last uh, uh, restrict uh, last one is 
as future methods do not have id so we can trace uh, we cannot trace it directly because it return it does not returns the id that way and that but that's why it's very difficult to trace the future method so we can use another filter such as methods name or the job type to find the required job so moving to the next question next question was a uh, security models in the sales force so there are three levels of security first one is object level security then we have field level of security and then we have record level of security so uh, object level security can be managed through the profile and permission set field level security are also managed through the profile and permission set and the record level security can be managed through the owd which is organization wide default then a role hierarchy then we have sharing role then we have manual sharing and then we have apex sharing so through this we can uh, manage uh, the record level of security if you want more details uh, for this security model do let me know in the comment section i'm uh, uh, i will de more de uh, i will define more details about these things so moving to the next question so uh, next question was so in which scenario manual sharing button is not visible on ui so uh, if the object's owd is uh, private or public read only then only uh, the manual sharing buttons will be visible if it will be read write uh, public read write then the a uh, manual setting button visible it will be not visible so uh, when it will be visible only two uh, only two times like if the owd is private or owd is public read only then only manual setting button will be visible on ui so moving to the next question uh, next question is what is the object's history stores in salesforce so where is the object's history stores in the salesforce so uh if we are modifying uh, any fields on that of that objects so where we can track that the uh, what was the previous value of that field and about uh, how what the value changes for that field so uh, salesforce gives uh, for the every objects we have one history tracking so just for example account have account history then we have some custom object so we can uh, ha also have that custom objects history so uh, we can track from there uh, only so moving to the next question our uh, next question is uh, how many invocable methods can we write in apex class so we can write only one invocable methods in a single apex class it does not uh, we cannot write more than one invocable in the apex class moving to the next question next question was if you want to access the apex class in process builder how can we do it so uh, to use the apex class in the process builder we should write one apex class that has annotation invocable methods so we have to write one invocable methods in the apex class and then in the process builder we have to define like uh, the name of that process builders and then we have to define we have to select the apex class and what field do we have to change so uh, we have to mention all those things uh, in the process builders as well so uh, that's all about the part word answers and many me is so videos mein maine pure answers ko brief mein nahi bataya hai like jaise workflow hai to maine workflow ko pura define nahi kiya hai agar aap logo ko workflow ya fir process builder ya fir flows ke bare mein more uh, like more details mein janne hai to please do let me know the comment section i'm happy to make such videos so thanks for watching my videos uh, If you want part two answers, do let me know in the comment sections. Till then, keep learning and keep exploring. Jai Hind. Bye bye.